Okay, let's talk about ASVAB math. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take the ASVAB, which is awesome because that means you're enlisting uh, or seeking to enlist in the U.S. military. So um, we're going to be taking a look at a practice problem here that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for the math that you may encounter on the ASVAB. But uh, we'll get to that in a second. But let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And I'm also a veteran of the United States Marine Corps and U.S. Navy. I was actually enlisted in the Marine Corps and later became a uh, U.S. Navy surface warfare officer working with Marines. Uh, so I spent uh, several years in the, the military and obviously I've taken the ASVAB um, even though that was a long time ago, it was, you know, you'd be surprised the process for enlisting in the military, at least over the last, oh, I don't know, 30 years or so, it's been, it's different than let's say maybe what you're experiencing, but maybe not all that different. If you speak to veterans, you know, going back, you know, many years, except for let's say the draft, you know, era, you know, there's a lot, you, we can relate to one another, let's just say. So if you're going in taking an ASVAB, you know, talking to your recruiter, well, yes, I did the same thing. You know, uh, many, many, many years ago. But the uh, main thing with the ASVAB, let's go ahead and just write this out here. And if I got this correctly, it's the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. But the whole deal is what? You take the ASVAB, you're going to get um, scores, right? A score, if you will. Let's just call it a score. You get different types of scores, etc. But the thing is, this score is going to determine what MOS is you're qualified to enter, right? So uh, in the whole universe of MOSs that you might want to consider, and of course there's other things here, whether that MOS is uh, available right now when you're enlisting, et cetera. But at all the MOS, MOSs in the United States military, MOS stands, of course, I'm sure you know, military occupational uh, specialty, your, your IE, your job, which you're going to be looking to get into, uh, joining uh, the military, uh, you know, you need to score. Your score is going to have a direct impact, right? Probably the most significant. There's some other physical things too. Uh, let's say you might have color vision issues or whatnot. Yeah, there's physical things that you might also have to qualify for, but probably the biggest thing is your ASVAB scores, okay, is going to determine what doors are open to you in terms of MOS. So if you don't score that well on the ASVAB, right, your universe of MOSs that you can be qualified for is going to be a lot less than someone who scores really well on the ASVAB. And you want to consider all your options when you're joining the military. Now, let's say you uh, scored, you didn't score, let's say you score high, okay, um, but you decided, hey, I want to go on this MOS. Well, Maybe when you re-enlist, or may, you might transfer later uh, down the line, okay, you might qualify to go into another job in the military. So these ASVAB scores are going to follow you around, all right? So you don't want to have the mindset of like, yeah, whatever, I'll just score and I'll get whatever I want. Guess what? When you join the military, you might, you know, be like, man, I really like to do this job over here, but your ASVAB scores will not qualify uh, you for that. So these scores follow you, all right? So what am I saying, okay? I'm telling you what you know, what your recruiter is probably stressing is you need to take this exam seriously. Um, of course, you might have, you know, the, your recruiter might have said, hey, let's just, you know, uh, um, come on down to the office or go to MEPS and uh, take the ASVAB, we'll see where you stand. You individually, personally, okay? Not, not your recruiter, okay? You you should focus on your goals. Okay. What do you want to do? Right. And what you want to do is you want to score as high as possible on the ASVAB. If you're considering going into the military, you're at, you know, and you're going to be taking the ASVAB. You want to score as high as possible, even if you currently, you know, feel like you can just get the basic score that you need to get into whatever MOS that you're looking to get into. Okay. So part of that Okay, when you're talking about your the ASVAB, your aptitude battery, especially in today's high tech military, is critical thinking, analytical kind of skills. All right. In other words, you know, a big part of that is your mathematic, uh, mathematical ability or that mathematical thinking. So I could just tell you right now, 
There are plenty of MOSs in all the services, Marine Corps, Army, Navy, Air Force, doesn't make a difference. You're working with high tech, you know, advanced stuff, advanced, you know, kind of like engineering type of things. Uh, you know, um, if you're on a submarine in the U.S. Navy and you're a machinist major or electronic technician, you're, you know, you're, you're going to actually probably do some basic calculus and physics and things. So you can't have the mindset that, well, you're in high school and you don't, you know, you may not qualify for that. No, there's a lot of advanced jobs in the military. And I think the caliber of people going into service, at least as far as their technical requirements for these jobs, is just getting more and more challenging. Hence, you need to make math part of your uh, study um, uh, topics when you're preparing for the ASVAB, okay? And you're going to have to be really committed to uh, doing as well as you can on high school level mathematics. So that would include algebra, geometry, amongst other topics as well. So the, the more, the stronger you are in high school level math, you know, even advanced high school level math, the uh, more opportunities you're going to have. So anyway, sorry for the long introduction, but clearly I'm passionate about this because, you know, I'm not just talking to you um, as a math teacher here, I'm talking to you as a veteran as well. All right. So with that in mind, let's get to our practice problem. All right, so let me, um, the way I like to do these problems is, one, I'll tell you what the problem is. Okay, we don't know what it is yet. I'm going to tell you what the problem is, then I'm going to give you a hint. If you don't want to hear the hint, just pause the video, and then I'm going to solve the problem. All right, so let's say I have some darts. Okay, let's say this is a little dart here. Da, 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 da. And you throw the dart, and this is, let's say, the dart board, this whole thing. And it has this circle, okay, right here. So this circle in blue, okay, touches the edges right there, okay? So I want to know what is the probability that if you throw this start at this start board that it will land in the circle, right? So what's the probability that this start will land in the circle, right? So here's my dart board again. It's this rectangle, I have this... Um, circle right here okay i'm throwing a dart at it just one dart <laughs> okay i'm not gonna just throw a ton of darts just one dart what's the probability it will land in the circle all right so if you think you know what to do go ahead and pause the video and and uh, work on the problem and i'll now i'm going to give you a hint all right so if you don't want to hear the hint uh go ahead and uh you know obviously pause the video all right so probability in these type of um, problems is going to require us to really, it's basically an area problem, all right? So the probability of something landing in the circle, we can look at this in terms of the area. So we want, what we want to do here is find out what the area of the circle is, and we're going to divide that over the total area of the rectangle. So we'll put this the area of the rectangle, okay? So this is the setup for this problem. So we need to determine the probability, or sorry, the area of the circle, all right? And we're going to divide that by the area of the rectangle, right? That's going to be the probability of um, this dart if we threw it at this, um, you know, dart board, if you go with the circle, that's the probability of this dart hitting the circle and not like, let's say, over here, okay? So that's the setup. Now, I don't want to turn this into a full lesson on probability because this is only one of uh, several topics that you're going to want to be familiar with uh, on the ASVAB. But at least this is the basic, you know, a basic setup of how do you approach this problem. Now, the next hint I'm going to give you, if you need the hint, is some of you might be like, oh, I forgot how to find the area of a circle. So all of you hopefully remember how to find the area of a rectangle. Okay, but let's go ahead and do this real quick. So the area of the cir uh, area of a circle is equal to pi r squared, and then the area of a rectangle is equal to its length times its width. All right. Now don't worry that there's not units of measure here. There's not inches or centimeters or whatever. That that doesn't really um, apply in this particular problem. But um, now I've given you more than enough. Um, hints here, hopefully, to be able to calculate and figure this out. All right. And by the way, one last hint, okay, probability, we like to give it as percent, okay? So you're going to end up with a decimal. Make sure you turn that into a percentage. And now with that being said, that is more than enough 
in terms of the hint category. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get to the actual solution. So I kind of wrote this out. All right, let's take a look at um, the rectangle first. So we have uh, its length and its width is five times 10. So the area of the rectangle is 50. So hopefully, you know, uh, all of you out there are like, oh, that was pretty easy. So now let's get into the area of the circle. So I said area is equal to pi times r squared. So r is what? Well, r is the radius of the circle. So the radius of the circle, if you look at a circle like this, the radius is halfway through the diameter. So the whole width of the circle is the diameter halfway through and it emanating from the center is the radius. So the radius kind of goes all the way out like that from the center of the circle. So we have to kind of study this, you know, figure here for a second. And we could see that the width of the circle is five. I could tell because the circle is touching, you know, the rectangle right here. So it's five. So half of the diameter, half of the diameter is going to be the radius. So what is one, what's half of five? It's going to be what? 2.5. All right. So that is our radius. All right. So our radius is 2.5. So now I could plug this into my formula. Area equals pi, and pi, all right, if you don't know, is approximately equal to 3.14, the decimal 3.14. It's a very important um, number we uh, need when we're calculating um, uh, different type of things uh, relevant to circles, okay, area, circumference, etc., amongst other things. It's a hugely important uh, number in mathematics, but this is a rough estimate uh, because pi we can't calculate precisely. So let's just use 3.14 for the sakes of this uh, for the sake of this problem. All right, so the area of the circle is going to be pi, okay, and I'll uh, turn this into a 3.14 here in a second times the radius squared. Again, we determined the radius is 2.5, and we've got to square that. All right, so 2.5 squared, in other words, 2.5 times 2.5 is 6.25. All right, so we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by pi. So I'm just kind of writing in reverse order here. And so we got 6.25 times pi. Again, pi, a rough estimate, is 3.14 as a decimal. So when we do that, we get approximately uh, 19.625 as the area of the circle. Okay. So as I stated in the beginning of this problem, the probability that of this start will hit the circle is going to be the area of the circle divided by the area of the rectangle, okay? So here the area of the circle is roughly 19.625 and the area of the rectangle is 50. So when I divide 19.625 uh, 19 divided by 50 in my little calculator here, I get 0.3925, all right? So this 0.3925, 3925 as a percentage, all I need to do is multiply this by 100. All right, so hopefully you're familiar with uh, going from decimals to percent, and I get 39.25%. Uh, percent. That's the probability that this dart will hit the circle and not over here in the rectangle, okay? All right, so that is the solution. Now, if you were able to do this problem without any hints or anything like that, that's pretty impressive, okay? Now, I have to say that's, um, you know, again, uh, shows that you, you know, you remember a lot of your high school, your, your high school math. Now, if you struggle with this problem because you forgot the formulas or whatnot, then that's okay as well. But if you're, once I gave you the formulas, you're able to kind of calculate through it, then that's pretty good too. If you were totally lost, don't panic, okay? That's the worst thing you can do, especially, you know, not only on the ASVAB, but in the military, okay? You don't want to panic. What do you need to do? Well, you need to adapt and overcome. You need to shift your mentality and be like, okay, what do I, I got to figure this out. So you have to establish, you know, a mission. Like, what is your goal? What is your objective, okay? And what's your mindset, right? How much time do you have to prepare, um, you know, to take the ASVAB, all right? Do what you have to do. I mean, this is, you're talking about a huge life uh, decision here. So you shouldn't, you know, um, you should be well motivated, let's say, to spend 
a lot of hours investing in your education so you can really impact your ASVAB score, right? Now, I'm only here to talk about the math uh, portion uh, of it, but, you know, there is no such thing as a kind of a quick crash course. You can't just improve uh, in, in mathematics, you know, in one or two days or three days or whatnot. You have to make a real commitment to it. But it's going to be a win-win uh, situation. You, you're going to win because you're going to improve yourself, improve a critical um, area of thinking that's important in terms of technology, all right? M math is everywhere, all right? It's everywhere. There's a, so many applications of math. It's not even funny. Even if you're going to be like a sniper, okay, you have to understand, you know, velocity of a bullet, wind, uh, windage, you know, how fast ratios and rates and all that, you, you just would be, you know, blown away. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, in today's uh, military, no matter what MOS, what direction you go, you're going to encounter some math, all right? And some of you are going to encounter a whole bunch of math, trigonometry and some really advanced stuff. Yes, it, that's without a college degree. And if you're... Um, you know, as motivated as I'm sure you are, just by virtue of uh, you preparing for the ASVAB, you're likely going to want to continue on and get your college degree. So you're going to need math no matter what. It's better to start working on it now so you can um, open up as many opportunities for yourself later down the road. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I think I've stated all the reasons to improve in math before you take that ASVAB. Um, so again, I'm going to leave a link to my ASVAB math uh, test prep course in the description of this video. Really comprehensive, good, strong review of high school level mathematics. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully consider subscribing. I have hundreds of uh, videos on my channel that can help you prepare um, for the type of math that you wanna uh, be strong in on the ASVAB already on my channel. So uh, that's some stuff you can check out if you like. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback, you know, uh, what. MOS are you going for? What service are you going for? I will say this much, you know, I'm certainly uh, ultra proud to have served in the Marine Corps. It was definitely one of the most challenging things of my entire life, and I've done a lot of different things, and it set the foundation for so much success uh, in my life, all right? It was one of the best decisions I've ever made, and I'm internally uh, uh, grateful. But with that being said, um, all the services are awesome, okay? Uh, so be proud whether you're going in the Army, Air Force, any other courses, inter service rivalries and whatnot. It doesn't make a difference. It's what you make of it, okay? It's your attitude. Um, so um, just by virtue of you being interested in a challenge, believe me, when you join the military, you're going to get that adventure <laughs> you're looking for. But hey, you know, open up as many doors as possible. There's so many cool MOS, MOSs now. Um, you know, today, uh, and even like, even like special forces type of jobs require, you know, really, really good ASVAB scores, <laughs> you know? So even if you're like thinking, oh, I'm just going to be a grunt. Or I'm going to do this. I'm like, yeah, there's, you know, you still need strong scores, right? So the long and the short of it is keep investing in yourself. Thank you for your interest in serving our country. And hopefully, uh, this video is uh, going to help you out on the ASVAB. So with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.